This is the Truth Network. Bible Wonders of Habakkuk. Oh, the yud verse on the second chapter of Habakkuk has a lot to do with, I, I, I'd like to call the yud section in the 119th Psalm the let it be, because <laughs> the last four verses have to do with let, and I think you're going to see how that fits into this particular verse. And certainly um, the last verse in the 119th Psalm in the yud section says, let my I make my heart sound in thy statutes that I be not ashamed, or let my heart be sound in thy statutes that I be not ashamed, I should say. <laughs> and you can see that shame has everything to do with this particular verse, and so you can see the connection. And it starts out, um, thou has consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and has sinned against thy soul. So... Like the, the word consulted there begins with the letter Yud, and it's actually the way that the verse starts. And it's an interesting thing to, to consult shame, <laughs> which is clearly what he did. And it says by cutting off many people. And, and the horrible, horrible consequence of that is what is going to let happen under the situation is that his heart is going to be awfully ashamed because he sinned against his own soul. And so... You know, it was interesting to me that Rashi pointed out that this is like Proverbs 2.20, which is extremely insightful to my, to my view um, when you look at what Proverbs 2.20 says. Now, excuse me, it's Proverbs 22, not 2.20. <laughs> so Proverbs 22, the fear of a king is as a roaring lion who provoketh him to anger, sinneth against his soul. Like, oh, wow, um... There, that's very interesting. So here we can see that by cutting off these people, you're sinning against your own soul. And apparently when you, when you do that, it's a result of absolutely infuriating the king. And so the, the beautiful part of that, when you back into it to an extent, is to see, oh my goodness, that when you go cutting off people, especially separating families, and you might even remember that Jesus said in Matthew 19, 16, uh, that so that they are no longer two, but one, let no man divide what God has put together. And so when you go about, you know, dividing families, you're, you're really angering the king. And, and it's, it's, it's amazing that if you really look at this even further and look at the wisdom of Solomon, there's a strange circumstance to me. It's always been strange and I always wondered about it until today that happens in first Kings chapter two, where essentially uh, Abinijah, where essentially Adonijah goes to um, Solomon's mother, Bathsheba, and asks her for the hand of Abishag, the Shunammitess. In other words, this was the nurse that, that, that King David had had, and he was asking that, that she would be made his wife. And you might remember that Solomon really didn't take well to this. <laughs> I mean, to say he was angry would be an understatement because what he actually says in verse 22 of First Kings 2, it says, And King Solomon answered and said unto his mother, And why dost thou ask Abishag the Shunammite for Abijah, Adonijah, excuse me, ask for the kingdom also, for he is mine elder brother, even for him and for Abiathar the priest and for Joab the the son of Jeruah. I mean, the, the idea of that, you can see, and, and then Solomon says, then King Solomon swear by the Lord, saying, God, do so to me, and more so if, if Adonijah has not spoken this word against his own life. You see that whole thing again that Solomon is saying um, that here was an example of making the king mad, and what made him so mad is interestingly also understood by Rashi which is helpful to me. And, and, and what Rashi taught about that verse, and this is quoting Rashi, it says, from the moment a commoner uses the scepter of the king, that is the beginning of authority. And so interestingly, apparently um, Solomon thought of the Shu, Shunammitess as the scepter of the king, which is, is a neat idea of the <clears throat> letter Zion because that letter means or the scepter of the king is a Zion, and it's a, ref, a, feminine ex, um, a feminine reflection of a masculine energy. And so, you know, obviously the wife of a king 
would, would be that scepter to some extent, which you know opens up why Solomon was so angry that literally his brother was asking for the authority of King David in a, in a sly manner, and that is why he got so angry. And when you think about that, it also kind of explains why Absalom, you might remember King David's older son that really betrayed him, slept with his wives on the rooftop of the house. Again, showing that he had authority over his father. You know, I, I, you know that's an interesting understanding. And even the point that, that um, I went and thought about how uh, Simeon slept with Jacob's uh, concubine, Bilhah. And, and so interestingly, so I studied that and went and saw that, and this is a bit of a bonus coverage that you might, we're going to get back to the verse here in a second, but it all kind of relates in that what it says there is that Bilhah was, of course, Rachel's uh, maid, and and Rashi teaches that what had happened was after uh, Rachel's death that Jacob went in and changed. He used to sleep in Rachel's tent, and, and he changed where he would sleep, and he went to begin to sleep with Bilhah, which was Rachel's nurse, which, which infuriated Simeon because he, it felt like it was another insult against his mother. So he went in, according to, to Rashi, and messed up that bed. And in doing so, from Jacob's standpoint, he was the same as sleeping with Bilhah. Again, the Bible's pretty clear that he lay with with her. Whatever the situation was, he was taking his father's authority in the same sort of way because, you know, this was his wife. And when you anger the king, it does not go good. And and clearly, you can see that this was a huge example of bringing shame onto the house of Simeon, which it did in so many ways. You know, from the get go, there as he was the first born and would have had burn first born and would have had all those rights that eventually uh, Judah got. And, and so, wow, what a change in direction because he usurped his father's authority. So obviously, it clearly angers the king when someone comes between a husband and a wife. I mean, here's, here's the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> so when you, when you look at your own life, you know, what does that look like? Like, man, it just, to sleep with another man's wife, you're, you're really breaking up a family and you're bringing shame and disgrace on your own family. And what God has put together, let no man put asunder. And here is the, the retribution for that. Like, man, you're literally going to anger the king at the, at, the, at the forfeit of your own soul. Of course, Jesus can cover that. I'm not saying that that's unforgivable sin or anything, but I am saying, look at the shame that's involved in that. And look what you're doing to your own house. And look what you're doing to the house of the person that you're shaming. And, and like, man, um, it's, it's, in God's eyes, a horrible, horrible, horrible thing because, you know, all the children involved, you're messing with the whole family. And so I, 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 you know, I realized that I may have lusted after women at point in time thinking that that and, and, and that would be horrible and, and like Jesus said, just as bad, but no doubt I've had it done to me where other people slept, not with Tammy, not my wife now, but my two previous wives. And, and in both cases, I know that how, how horrible that feels. And, and so I was thinking this morning, like, wow, number one, I don't have to, to necessarily um, revenge those things because God will revenge. He's going to make this right. And he is going to let it be that these people uncovered their shame and, and, and his anger will, will be on, you know, um, however it, all that works out. But I also thought, what an opportunity for me to forgive, Right. And, and I know I've forgiven those that did that, but apparently I need to really, really forgive and, and ask God to, to uh, lighten whatever retribution on the households of those people that did that. Because apparently there's a very, very stiff, you know, thing that happens as a result. But here, you know, of course, getting back to Nebuchadnezzar and all those involved in this, clearly, you know, God is, is showing us how it's going to be. He's going to let it be the light that it is going to come on these people, this Yud, is, is not going to be good, okay? And it will be shameful, and it will uncover their sin. And, and that's the thing that we know, is that God's light will shine in the darkness, and God will make these things right. And, and so, you know, it's very interesting to me, all the things that this unpacked for me in other scripture and things I'd always wondered about. It gives me a little more clarity, uh, clarity on, on why Solomon did what he did, why Simeon did what he did, why Jacob did what he did, 
um, and, and what God did, what he did, and, and what he will continue to do, you know, if people, you know, act in some way to split up families. One of the worst things you can possibly do, apparently, because you're sinning against your own life, your own soul. Well, thanks for listening again. If God puts it on your heart to share this podcast, the light that it shares, we would be so delighted that you would hit the little button, share this with somebody. And again, I thank you so much for listening.